Hello and welcome. Today we are going to discuss a very important viral disease of ruminants that is the foot and mouth disease. It is also known as aphthous fever, contagious aphtha or penzootic aphtha. So FMD is a highly contagious acute viral disease of all the global footed animals as you all know that that is the cattle buffalo sheep goat and pigs horses mules and donkeys are resistant to the disease it is characterized by high fever and vesicular eruptions on the mouth oral mucosa feet and sometime on teats of animals talking about the etiology of the disease it is caused by aphthovirus belonging to the family picornaviridae it is having a positive sense single stranded rna genome without an envelope now other picornaviruses include the human rhinovirus and the poliovirus which cause common cold and polio respectively in human beings let's talk about the serotypes there are seven major serotypes of the virus which include o e c asia 1 and sat 1 2 and 3 the sat stands for south african territory indicating its origin in south africa so in india o a c and asia 1 are prevalent of these o is most prevalent and c is least prevalent Nowadays another serotype has been emerging in India and gaining importance that is the A22 Now there have been more outbreaks associated with the O and E strain serotype rather than the C Even this question was asked in this year's GRF examination the options were given that which of the following serotype of FMD virus is least prevalent in India so you must remember this the answer was sat 1 now talking about the morbidity and mortality of the disease as you can see the morbidity is virtually 100% and all the animals present on a farm are affected but at the same time the case fatality rate is only 2% and 20% in young animals so from this you can clearly see that it is not a fatal disease not fatal but still fmd is most feared disease of animals globally why is that because first reason is it is very highly contagious secondly the economic implications associated with control of fmd in various countries okay let's talk about the modes of transmission two primary modes of transmission of the disease are ingestion and inhalation of infected materials in endemic areas most of the susceptible animals catch infection by coming in direct contact with the infected animals when they are moved across borders in trade or for some other purposes the pigs pigs generally contract the infection by ingestion of infected meat scraps which is a great danger as they can transmit the disease to the susceptible cattle from pigs to cattle the disease is transmitted by the movement of people animals and other fomites or inanimate objects like abattoir waste vehicles clothes of the staff etc the further spread or you can say inter spread between cattle occurs via airborne route and it is a very important point to pay attention here that via aerosol route the virus can spread up to 250 km of distance 250 km so now you can see that how much of a severe situation this is and how difficult it is to control an fmd outbreak now the virus can persist in the aerosol for long periods of time especially in the temperate and subtropical climates that is in the colder climates not in the warm and dry and also humidity plays an important role in survival of the virus virus survives for a longer time in more humid conditions a study has shown that serotype a 
it requires less exposure time that is of only 4 hours of contact transmission to cause the disease in susceptible animals and also it had the highest levels of virus shedding in the saliva and the nasal secretions as compared to the O and Asia 1 serotypes of the virus. The first site of virus infection and its rapid multiplication in cattle is pharynx and that is why the virus first appears in the oropharyngeal fluid. The onset of clinical signs associated with viremia and the presence of virus in oropharyngeal and nasal fluids. After few days of viremia, the virus appears in milk and saliva for up to 24 hours before vesicles appear in mouth. Also, all other secretions of the animal like urine, feces, semen, etc. become infective even before clinical illness appears in the infected animal. Okay, so why this is to get you an idea that after the infection, how much time later the virus appears in whichever secretions of the animal. So if we take another look, so then the first site in which the virus replicates is the pharynx. So the virus appears in the oropharyngeal fluid. After that, the viremia occurs and the virus can be detected in the nasal fluid and the oropharyngeal fluid, following which after a few days of viremia, it appears in milk and saliva even before the vesicles appear, okay, that is before the clinical signs. Now the period of maximum infectivity is when the vesicles rupture because the vesicular fluid has a maximum concentration of the virus. You must remember this. Now animals rarely remain infective for more than four days after the rupture of vesicles, but sometimes virus can remain on the skin or hair of the infected animals and sometimes the an animals may become convalescent carriers or if vaccinated animals catch the infection they also become carriers they also become carriers now this is an important point again that pigs do not become carriers pigs don't act as carriers of the disease. As we have already discussed, the main site of virus application is nasopharynx. Erratic low levels of excretion has been reported up to two years of infection in infected animals. And also, the virus has been found in the germinal center of the lymph nodes in the oropharyngeal region up to almost a month. Now, talking about the wild reservoirs of the disease. African buffalo is the most important reservoir of the virus in wild and it is also the natural host of the South African territory strains of the virus. While the Indian buffalo, the infection is common after the outbreaks with Asia 1 infection. That is virus persists in such kind of cases. The virus has also been reported from the nasal mucosa of people working in the vicinity of the infected animals up to 28 hours that is that people like the staff or the farm workers can transmit the disease from infected animal to the susceptible animals and it has been shown that the coat and face mask did not prevent this infection as you know the disease is also mildly zoonotic but severe signs have not been reported in human beings. And the virus may survive for 18 hours in milk depending upon the temperature and the pH. This virus survives favorably at a neutral pH. That is both acidity and alkalinity are detrimental to the virus. Flash pasteurization does not inactivate the virus nor does the processing of milk into various products like milk powder, butter, cheese and casein products. The virus has also been reported to be transmitted by a semen in a cattle thus we, FMD is the disease which must be ruled out 
for the AI or the semen has been collected from the pool. The virus has been detected in the semen of boats, but it has not been reported as a means of transmission. Neither does the transfer of embryos from the donor cows affected with FMD has been reported to transmit the disease via the transfer of embryos. So this was all about the transmission of the virus. Now let's discuss about the various risk factors involved in the transmission or the occurrence of the disease. So first of all, we talk about the host factors. The disease, as I told you, occurs in all the cloven footed animals, including cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat and pigs. But the disease is most important in cattle and pig only. However, sheep, goat, buffalo and llamas in South America have been shown to be affected. Also in India, the disease is milder in buffalo than in cattle. Still, cattle, sheep, goat can become carriers but are not regular sources of infection. The more susceptible animals include immature and those animals which are in a good condition. This is an important point here that horses and the old world camelids that is the dromedary camels are not susceptible but the new world camels that is the bacterian camels are a potential source. Sorry. The new world camels, that is the bacterian camels, can contract the disease. Now, the domesticated Asian buffalo shows typical signs. Then, wild reservoirs of the disease include small rodents and hedgehogs in Europe and capybaras in South America. Now, let's talk about the environmental pathogens and pathogenic factors. Virus is resistant to the external influences and common disinfectants which are used like phenol etc and also it is resistant to the common meat storage practices that includes freezing of the meat now virus may persist up to one year in infected premises up to almost three months in feed and up to one month on hairs it is susceptible to the changes away from the neutral as I already told. Sunlight destroys the virus very effectively, but it may persist for long times on pasture at low temperatures, that is in temperate climates. Boiling destroys the virus if it is from free from the tissue and the autoclaving is the best method of heat sterilization. Virus can survive for more than 60 days in the semen of the bull which has been frozen up to 79 minus 79 degrees celsius so in general from what we can make out from all this that virus is generally sensitive to heat it is sensitive to the changes in ph but it is resistant to cold or you can say it is less susceptible to the cold so these are the disinfectants which we can use to destroy the virus within a few minutes which include 1 to 2 percent sodium hydroxide 1 to 2 percent formalin and 4 percent sodium bicarbonate this is asked a lot of times in various exams that which of the following disinfectants can be used to effectively destroy the fmd virus after death of the animal in carcass there is development of acdt due to the rigor mortis and accumulation of lactic acid which inactivates the virus. But still in the carcass, the virus may survive for a prolonged period of time in viscera, bone marrow, blood vessels and lymph nodes because the acid production is not that great in these areas. This is another important point that it is claimed that the virus can pass through the elementary tract of the birds unchanged that is intact that is why they can serve to spread the virus over the long distances even along continents so the birds are a potential source to spread the infection the third point is immune mechanism the immunity after natural infection persists for one to four years in cattle and for shorter period in pigs as you can see, the period of immunity 
from natural infection is much more than that due to infection sorry than due to vaccination as you know vaccination provides immunity for almost up to an year and you have to go for biannual vaccination now let's talk about the economic importance of the diseases i already discussed that it is one of the most feared diseases of animals around the world why is that the reason is it is very contag contagious disease and as i already told you it can spread up to 250 kilometers via aerosol route now the economic losses include the loss of animals the expense of eradication of the disease interference in trade and movement of the livestock it is mildly zoonotic and has been categorized as OIE containment group 4 pathogen you should remember this this might also be asked in various competitive examinations now let's discuss about the pathogenesis of the disease the surface capsid proteins VP1, 2 and 3 determine the virus's antigenicity and ability to interact with the host receptors and to cause the disease. These are the structural proteins, okay, structural proteins of the virus. Now, we can categorize or classify the classification to three phases that is the pre viremic phase the viremic phase and the post viremic phase let's talk about the pre viremic phase which lasts for about 3 days it is characterized by the introduction of infection inside the body of the animal and the primary replication of the virus at the replication sites in ruminants generally the infection occurs via the respiratory route and less efficiently it may occur via abrasion of the skin and the mucous membrane so from whichever route, let's say if it entering if it is entering through the aerosol route, the virus attaches to the epithelial cells lining the respiratory tract and then they penetrate inside the cytoplasm of the cells. Now this virus has an ability to evade host's immune response. That is, they can block the host's innate immunity by temporarily blocking the interferon response. It is important. Temporarily blocking the interferon response and influencing the ability of natural killer cells to recognize and eliminate the virus infected cells. Allowing the rapid multiplication of virus for a few days causing viremia and become highly contagious. Let's see once, once more. That virus can evade the host immune response by blocking the interferon response, temporarily blocking the interferon response and influencing the ability that is decreasing the ability of the natural killer cells to recognize and eliminate the virus infected cells, allowing the rapid multiplication of the virus for a few days causing viremia and become highly contagious. The primary replication site as we have already discussed multiple times is the nasopharyngeal region in cattle. And subsequent widespread replication occurs in lungs coinciding with the onset of viremia. Pigs are very less, as I have already told, pigs are very less susceptible to the aerosol infection. And as I told you, the pigs are potent excretors. Potent excretors of aerosols. carrying the virus while cattle is the most susceptible to the aerosol infection pigs become infected by ingestion of infected meat or by direct contact in pigs the virus accumulates in the lymphoid tissue while in cattle it was accumulating in the pharyngeal region in pigs up to six hours up to six hours after the infection tissue drain tissues drained by the mandibular lymph, lymph nodes and tonsils and then the virus spreads throughout the body. Now, the second phase 
is the viremic phase. After gaining access to the blood, that is after viremia, the virus spreads to the various epidermal sites, probably in the macrophages. So, you should remember this also, that the virus affects the macrophages, okay, in the epidermal tissues. Gross lesions develop only in those areas which are subjected to the mechanical trauma and unusual physiological wear, that is the epithelium of mouth, feet, dorsum of snout and tricks and teats. The characteristic lesions appear in these sites after incubation period of 1 to 20 days, but usually it is about one week. During this phase, the virus is excreted in exhaled air, milk, saliva, urine, feces and semen for about two weeks. Now let's come to the post viremic phase. It is characterized by the healing of the lesions and it is also known as convalescence period. Period or convalescence phase. The healing is rapid in oral mucosa and slow in the foot lesions. Most adult animals recover and become immune for years. But some animals do become carriers. African buffalo becomes the lifelong carriers. As we already discussed, it is a very important reservoir of the virus in the wild. Virus persists in the oropharyngeal region and germinal centers of the lymph nodes and possibly in the dendritic cells of the lymphoid organ. Let's talk about the disease in sheep. Generally, the disease is mild in sheep and goats. Uh, sometimes this clinical signs like hyperthermia, serous nasal discharge, salivation, oral and feet lesions can be seen and the virus may persist in the pharyngeal area. In young animals, especially in neonates, necrotizing myocarditis, it is very important. Necrotizing myocarditis occurs, which is also characterized by, you must have read, the tigroid heart appearance. It is a very important post-mortem lesion and is asked in various exams. This form, also known as the malignant form, is also seen in adults by infections with the type O serotypes. In goats, the disease is mild and is characterized by small oral lesions but severe feet lesions involving all the feet. Now let's discuss about the clinical findings of the disease. The incubation period in the typical field cases which are found in the field in cattle is generally 3 to 6 days that is almost 1 week. Almost 1 week. At onset, there is the first sign which is observed by the farmer is a precipitate fall in the milk yield and a high fever reaching up to 104 to 106 degree for a night with severe dejection and anorexia followed by the acute painful stomatitis. And at this stage, you must remember that the temperature becomes subnormal or normal. Excessive salivation is there and the saliva hangs in long ropes like strings and there is a characteristic smacking of the lips by the animal. The vesicles and the bullae of almost 1 to 2 cm diameter appear on the buccal mucosa, dental pad and tongue which rupture in 24 hours leaving a raw abraded area which heals in almost 1 week. And as I already told that this is the period of maximum infectivity. Maximum infectivity. Because the vesicular fluid contains maximum concentration of the virus. Vesicles also appear in the food, especially in the clefts and the coronet region. If there is secondary bacterial infection, it may lead to the involvement of deeper structures producing severe lameness in the animal and the animal even may become recumbent in this situation. 
vesicles on the teat in involving the teat orifice and accompanied by secondary bacterial infection leads to mastitis pregnant animals may abort or have stillbirths eating resumes in 2 to 3 days after healing of the lesions but convalescence period may be as long as 6 months in young animals heavy mortality is seen due to myocardial damage as already discussed now the acute myocardial form in adults in this first of all it is caused by the infection with the o serotype initially there is typical course of the disease as it occurs in with any other serotype then suddenly there is a relapse which occurs on the fifth or the sixth day characterized by dyspnea weak and irregular heart action and death occurs during convulsions occasionally this on post mortem again as i have already told you found the tigroid heart appearance occasionally there is localization of the virus in git leading to the signs of enteritis including dysentery and diarrhea ascending posterior paralysis has also been reported in some cases now the various sequelae of the disease there is a chronic syndrome theek hai which occurs due to the damage of the endocrine system characterized by dyspnea anemia hair overgrowth heat intolerance known as hairy panther this is very important hairy panthers although this syndrome has not been reported in our indian zebu cattle but it is important from the exam point of view in sheep and goat there is a mild disease also other sequel of the disease includes secondary mastitis lameness and also diabetes is seen in animals affected with fmd in sheep and goat there is mild disease but they may transmit the disease to cattle in goat common syndrome is appearance of few small lesions but with more severe involvement of all the four feet in pig the disease is similar and can be very serious this is an important point that there is a porcinophilic strain o taiwan 97 <clears throat> it can be asked in competitive exams the por- that name one porcinophilic strain of fmd that is o taiwan 97 now let's talk about the clinical pathology first of all which samples you should collect in the clinical pathology of an animal suffering from fmd collect the fresh vesicular fluid and the surrounding epithelial tissue in a transport medium this is important to remember about what is the composition of the transport medium that is equal amounts of glycerol and 0.04 molar phosphate buffer at a ph of 7.2 to 7.6 as the virus survives at the neutral ph or the equal concentration of the glycerol and the pbs in this medium only you should transmit the samples suspected for fmd blood should be collected along with the oropharyngeal fluid samples identification of virus can be done in the tissue or the fluid by the following methods that virus isolation by inoculation the cell cultures or the unweaned mice in cell culture cytopathic effect can be observed in 48 hours and the virus can be inoculated into the unweaned mice okay and the anti serum can be used to prevent and confirm the disease now elisa indirect sandwich elisa can be used complement fixation test but it is less sensitive then nucleic acid recognition can be done by reverse trans cryptase pcr it is more sensitive than elisa and in situ hybridization lateral flow immunochromatography strips can detect o a and asia 1 serotypes within 10 minutes and it is a on site test that is we can also say that it is a field test lateral flow immunochromatography now serological test these detect the antibodies 
against structural proteins and non-structural proteins produce in but structural proteins as we discussed the vp1 2 and 3 are produced in both vaccinated as well as the infected animals so if you are using the uh, antibodies against structural proteins for identification of the disease then you cannot differentiate if these antibodies are due to the natural infection or due to the vaccination so in order to differentiate between vaccinated and non vaccinated animals a non structural protein should be used now the tests which are prescribed for international trade are virus neutralization liquid phase blocking elisa antibodies to the polyproteins 3a b or 3a b c are the most reliable indications of the infection an epitope based elisa can differentiate between infected and vaccinated animals epitope based elisa no the intradermal injection in the plantar pads of the guinea pig of the fresh vesicular fluid leads to appearance of vesicles on the foot pads 1 to 7 days later and secondary vesicles appear on the mouth 1 to 2 days later it is the animal inoculation test now let's discuss about the post mortem findings of the disease on post mortem vesicles may be found extending up to the pharynx esophagus four stomachs intestines and even trachea and bronchi teats and membrane glands are often swollen as there is mastitis in malignant form that is the one caused by the o zero type and in neonates there are severe epicardial hemorrhages ventricular walls this is important the ventricular walls appear streaked with the patches of yellow tissue interspread with the normal myocardium giving a tiger heart appearance and if the animal survives it leads to replacement fibrosis and heart is enlarged that is cardiomegaly and the heart is flabby on histopathology we will see the vesicles start as the foci of progressive swelling necrosis and lysis of infected keratinocytes in deeper layers of epidermis along with the accumulation of fluid in the space followed by this there is necrosis of the overlying keratinocytes leading to the rupture of vesicles to form erosions which may extend up to the dermis to form ulcers especially this is seen on the feet mild leukocytic infiltration is seen around the erosions and the ulcers there is acinar necrosis seen in the memory glands of epithelium memory glands epithelium in heart in the malignant form severe hyaline degeneration necrosis and occasional calcification of myocardial fibers is seen now let's talk about the differential diagnosis of the disease there are several other diseases in which similar kind of lesions are seen in various species so first of all these include vesicular exanthema and vesicular swine disease these two occur in swine only in blue tongue also similar lesions are seen in the oral mucosa like nodule type lesions are seen in the tongue of the sheep which occurs only in sheep in cattle and buffalo the bovine viral diarrhea rinderpest malignant catarrhal fever and lumpy skin disease also are diseases similar that should be differentiated from fmd in these the lesions develop in the mucosa and sometimes in the feet but this is the important point that the lesions are never vesicular vesicles don't develop okay the lesions commence as erosions and proceed to form ulcers pox infection of membrane gland should also be differentiated and foot rot in sheep should be under the differential diagnosis of the disease now the treatment as such as you all know it is a viral disease okay. so viral diseases there are no specific treatments available we can just provide the supportive care to the animal and prevent secondary bacterial infections first of all the lesions oral lesions should be washed with kmno4 lotion and 2% lm solution followed by application of boroglycerin paint on the oral mucosa 
the food lesions they should be washed with 2% copper sulfate solution and fly repellent should be applied to prevent meiosis the levomisole and zinc sulfate have been shown to be effective in certain cases flunixin meglumine and long acting tetracyclines can also be used then this has also been reported porcine type 1 interferon in pigs and bovine type 3 interferon in bovines can also either protect or significantly delay or decrease the severity of the clinical disease so now about the control the in generally in foreign countries they follow the policy of test and slaughter but that is not possible in india and also it is not economically viable so the most practical method of control is vaccination in india a tetravalent vaccine is available including the oac and asia1 serotypes of the virus another serotype aind 1782 it has been shown to be broad immunogenic spectrum as a promising candidate for vaccine now the age at which the animal should be vaccinated the cows which are born from un- unvaccinated dams should be vaccinated 4 to 8 months of age as it is a biannual vaccination and the cows born from the vaccinated dams should be vaccinated at an age of 6 and 10 months of age lambs can be vaccinated 90 days of age pregnant cattle should be vaccinated between 3 to 6 months of pregnancy while at the same time pregnant ewe should be vaccinated almost 2 months before lambing another approaches include the ring vaccination and frontier vaccination in ring vaccination the area within a certain radius where outbreak has occurred are vigorously vaccinated okay and in frontier vaccination the nearby area like on the border if the disease has occurred at a particular place then the adjacent area should also be vaccinated to create a buffer zone to prevent the spread of the infection uh, immunity from the vaccine lasts for almost one year and another vaccine which includes fmd hs and black quarter is also available as per its immunity for one year the dose of vaccine is it is given at the rate of 3 ml okay 3 ml i am so this was all about the foot and mouth disease let's take a quick recap so as i told you it is caused by aptovirus belonging to the picornia viridi family it is having a positive and single stranded rna genome yeah i forgot one thing here that it is the smallest known virus of animal origin so this question might also be asked that which of the following is the smallest virus of animal origin now these are the serotypes these are the modes of transmission primarily inhalation and ingestion uh, via aerosol route it can be transmitted up to 250 km the primary site is pharynx the virus survives in the pharyngeal area in cattle period of maximum infectivity coincides with the rupture of the vesicles pigs don't become carriers african buffalo is the wild reservoir of the disease then the new world camel that is the bacterian camels can contract the disease these are the disinfectants which should be used to kill the virus or to destroy the virus <coughs> birds are a potent source of transmission of the disease over long distances it is an oie containment group 4 pathogen these are all the about the pathogenesis of the disease these are the various clinical findings vesicles high fever smacking of lips ropey strings of saliva acute myocardial form in adults and neonates characterized by dichroid heart appearance the sequela are secondary mastitis lameness diabetes a sin- and a syndrome due to endocrine damage on hairy panthers 
दो नोट रिपोर्टेड इन इंडिया अपोर साइनोफिलिक स्ट्रेन द ओ टाइम नाइनटी सेवन द ट्रांसपोर्ट मीडियम फॉर द सैंपल्स सस्पेक्टेड फॉर एफ एम डी इंक्लूड दिस्ट्रोल एंड द पी बी एस एपिटोबेजलाइजर शुड बी यूज फॉर डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग इन्फेक्टेड वैक्सीनेटेड एनिमल्स पोस्टमार्टम फाइंडिंग्स डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस ट्रीटमेंट एंड वैक्सीनेशन सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट एफ एम डी